We will open the meeting at 6.04. Um, can I have uh, any feedback and approval of the minutes of November 19th, 2019? So moved. Second? Who did that motion? Sorry. Oh, Ashley. Sorry. Second. All in favor? All righty. Uh, we have warrants. <coughs> so there are not actually warrants for you to sign tonight because you did sign them uh, last week, yep. I think. Uh, so there were, did I say nine or six? There six. were six warrants that were signed previously for $41,320.36. Um, and just as a reminder, we had to get those signed ahead of time so that we didn't miss the town's warrant schedule with our meeting being bumped back. So thank you so much if you did come in. I really appreciate your help. Um, I sent out the expenditure reports for the general fund and the school choice funds. Uh, so if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to take them, whether they're from last month's packet or this one. Uh, I believe that the packet from last month was reprinted for you in here, but the most recent was sent electronically. Mm -hmm. There's no major concerns at this point. Kristen and I have had some conversations about some maintenance things, but we've been able to free up funds from other line items and um, no major issues to report awesome. no big leaks no big <laughs> <laughs> great water's working water's working water's doesn't good. smell that's awesome great. that's all i have until the budget review great all right so we're on to public comment and our guests going now please that would be okay. wonderful this is your opportunity Hi, my name is Henry Pleasant, and we are fifth graders here at Conway Grammar School. Thank you for everything that you do for our school and letting us talk about how we eliminated plastic straws at our school. First, Liam will explain what we did and why. Hi, I am Liam from the fifth grade classroom here at CGS. In our class, we tried to eliminate plastic straws in the lunchroom. It started by me and my friend complaining to each other about plastic straws in our lunch. That idea grew and we got some help from our classmates. We wrote letters to Mrs. Gordon telling her what we thought about single-use plastic in our cafeteria. We did this because we understand the effects on our planet for plastic pollution. Plastic pollution causes many big problems like climate change, it destroys the ecosystem, and causes ocean pollution, air pollution, land water, and many other types of pollutions. We decided to do this because we wanted to be able to help with this big problem. Now Kelsey will read the le her letter to Mrs. Gordon. Hi, I'm Kelsey Bakery. This is the letter I wrote to Miss Gordon. Dear Miss Gordon, I think we should stop using plastic straws very fast. Our ocean has picked up over one million pounds of plastic trash out of the ocean. So we want to get rid of all the plastic straws. Every time you throw away a plastic straw, mostly a lot of that trash ends up in the ocean. Around the world, over 100 million marine animals are killed each year. By 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. So we should stop using plastic straws. Save the world and all the animals. From Kelsey. Now Natalie will read part from the letter Miss Gordon wrote to our class. Hi, I'm Natalie Wells. This is part of uh, Miss Gordon's letter to our class. You are, your class is going, you as a class are going to make a big difference. You wrote me passionate letters and you have persuaded me to contact the food service director to make a change. I have contacted her to tell tell her that CGS will no longer want straws in our school. I explained that the fifth grade students have brought big concerns to me and that I wanted to take action because of this. Thank you for taking on this responsibility and for making a change here at Conway Grammar School. I am happy to inform you that because of your class and your passion and your research in letters, CGS will no longer have straws beginning Tuesday, January 22nd. We will continue to use straws for kindergartners and pre-kindergartners, students and students who may need straws due to medical needs. Changes are coming thanks to you. I'm incredibly proud of each one of you for taking 
on this important issue and bringing it to my attention in a respectful manner. I'm also appreciative that you gave me time to do something about this once I received your letters. You make me proud every single day. Today you made me prouder than I have ever been during my time here at Conway Grammar School. Thank you. Now Jacob and Henry will tell you what our class wants to do next. We would like to take every plastic item that we don't reuse out of our school and get rid of them. After we do that, we would like to tell all the other schools in our district our plan, and we feel like this should be done quickly. Uh, my name is Jacob Chris, and I'm from the fifth grade. So, Superintendent Modesto, we need your help to get plastic straws out of the other schools in our district. Maybe you can help us stop providing all the all plastic straws in the district. Henry has some facts to share with you. Um, more than 90% of sea birds and fish have plastic particles in their stomach. Every two minutes, there are two million plastic bags used. 500 million straws are used every day across the globe. Since 1950, there has been around 8.3 billion tons of plastic produced worldwide. That's more than 800,000 Eiffel Towers. Uh, it takes 500 years for a straw to decompose. Four million plastic bottles are bought around the world every minute. And an average time a bag is used for is 12 minutes and then thrown away. One thing we'd like to do next is stop using plastic cups in the cafeteria. Right now our cafeteria uses plastic cups for water and juice. Right. Uh, we think we should take out the plastic cups so that we aren't causing more problems for our planet. Thank you for listening to our requests, and thank you again for everything that you do for our school. And does anyone have any questions? <coughs> I'm the superintendent, Mr. Modesto. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys currently using paper straws in replacement of straws or going without straws completely? Um, um, all the other grades except pre K and kindergarten uh, aren't using straws, but they are using straws because like, they, um, they probably need to. Get a little but what use. kind of straws are they using now? Paper because straws. Of They're using paper yeah. straws and yeah. So you got rid of all plastic yeah. straws yes. completely? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, have you gotten rid of plastic straws in your homes? Have you made sure you educate yes, your parents? Yes, we don't have any. Yeah, mostly we all don't have plastic straws, or we have plastic straws that you re reuse. Great. Awesome. How will you drink water and juice without the plastic cups? Um, it's pretty simple. Um, there's like little plastic juice containers, which are also bad. Um, you can just open it up and sip out of it, which is really easy. And um, the milk cartons actually just have a place where you open them, and it's like made so to, for you to go like that. But everybody used to put a straw in it, yeah, you which just makes know. sense. You don't have to take the lid off the apple juice container the full way. You can just take it off a little bit and sip it. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what is your suggestion for, so part of the food service is that we have to provide water and cups as part of the food service? It's a law, it's a state law, so what kind of, how are we going to provide the um, cups? Mostly, um, we used to have paper cups and those were a lot better, but then for some reason we switched to plastic, I don't know why, but we'd like to go back to paper. So it's, it sounds like a pretty easy solution for us to take yeah. care of. Yeah, and we can still get water easily from the sink. Do we have any questions from the parents or our uh, other teachers? Can we do anything to help you? Uh, sh um, you can probably um, if you're you um, if you go to like a restaurant or uh, like a fast food restaurant, um, then you can probably if they give you a straw. Um, um, first ask like to not have a straw with it or um, take the straw home and, like wash it out and maybe like put it in a pile to burn or something. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and at restaurants ask to not have a straw. 
Or you can just not use straws. Yeah, they give you they give you it in paper. Just leave it there. Well, our local establishment, the Conway Inn, has paper straws. You might want to talk to Helen Baker at Baker's. I'm not sure if she's moved to, to paper straws. But the Conway Inn has paper straws now. So maybe you're starting a town movement, which is great. Mm -hmm. District. District yeah. movement. I mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> Excellent. And How did you learn all of these facts? What kind of research well, did you do? Mostly research like on computer. We just take in plastic bags and some people um, research for ocean, which is like a business that like picks up plastic out of the ocean. You did talk about what kinds of websites were good resources, right? Yeah, like Google and ones that have like um, dot .com at the end or dot, um, dot .gov. Good. Good. I'd just like to comment that um, Initially, some students were thinking about just doing sort of a mini quiet protest and not using straws. And then these f the fifth grade class decided that it's so much better, and that's what I complimented them for, too, to go through the right steps. And when they do that, they made change. They were patient. They did their research. They wrote their letters. Mm -hmm. They did the presentations of their letters in class. Mm -hmm. They gave me the letters. They gave me a couple of days to respond, and it was a perfect process. Mm -hmm. And like Liam said, it started with um, basically me and him, and then we got our friends involved, and then eventually there was a thing in class where we were all like, instead of science, we were allowed to like research draws, which was good, and then we wrote letters to you. No, I'm talking to the students. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> also, they like to make a bottle bench, which is like if you have snack wrappers, you put it, you stuff it into a bottle, and if you get a lot of wrappers, you can stuff it in the bottle, and it will become like a brick. It will become really hard, and we can make benches out of all the trash. And like little reuse. sculptures. Yeah, and that would just be like reusing and not recycling and wasting plastic. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, uh, Mr. Merritt here goes to a meeting which is called the Collaborative Meeting, and that right. has school <coughs> committees from 40, how many? 42, 42 different 42 school towns. Mm -hmm. Across um, Massachusetts. Yeah. And occasionally all the superintendents from all those towns are there too, so you might want to bring your um, your education to one of their meetings because you could mm -hmm. spread the word even further. Yeah. You know? yeah, I'll um, say that um, sharing a story, like a success story like this, can encourage others to also try to create their own success stories. Mm -hmm. So the more you talk about this, you'll be sharing that with others. So thank you for bringing that to us. Sir. Welcome. We've also, um, Senator Hine is very big right now, it is a big focus, so we've invite, I've invited him to come and talk to our fifth grade as well. That's awesome. <coughs> so it does sound like the next step is Ms. Gordon and I need to talk about how we can get this group to talk to other classes in Sunderland, Deerfield, and Waitley and see if they're interested in doing kind of that sort of thing. We could figure out how to do that. We'll talk. Right. Great. Awesome. Well, we would like to give you a round of applause for your efforts. And you're very brave to come forward and very polished and professional. I appreciate your teacher getting, helping you organize all of this. Um, and we really appreciate the message. I'm sure our town and our environment will benefit from your voices. So keep talking. So, thank, you. thank you very much. Yeah, I'll say that will be the highlight of our meeting. Feel free. Thank you. 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 I love my job. I, <laughs> I can't even I can't even describe to you. I know. <laughs> Just awesome. Thank you for
letting me have this job. Yeah. <laughs> you can yeah. see. Awesome. All righty. We're on to unfinished business uh, capital requests. So, oh, sorry. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, that's, that's a very tough act to follow. It <laughs> is. But, um, wow, students looking to the future, I feel that we're in good hands. <laughs> and if I could just take a few minutes sure. of your valuable time here. Um, my name is Paulette Lovechuck, and I speak to you tonight both as a teacher in Union 38 and as a resident of Conway. And I want to thank you, too, for all your service and all your support of the school, teachers, students, the community. Thank you so very much. And um, I've had the good fortune to be able to teach and learn in the district for the past 10 years and for several years before this time. Overall, I've taught for 25 years in both public and private settings, ages 2 to 17, mostly at the elementary school. And I say good fortune because the staff, children, families, communities, and our, our school committee here offer support, encouragement, and just the right <coughs> amount of challenge. So I come before you tonight to ask for your continued support as we negotiate the fair contract that we're looking for to close that gap with our colleagues at the middle and high school and to have a fair wage increase that's proportionate to our um, proposed change to retire be retirement benefits. And, um, I just want to say thank you for offering me this opportunity to speak, and we hope we can count on your support as we move forward with these negotiations and as we prepare for the future for our <laughs> students. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, anyone else? Uh, capital requests. Um, so I can give an update on the, the swipe card system. Uh, everything is ready to go. Um, uh, oh, the hardware. Take it out. No. Just <laughs> 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 you know, like, that's an old joke regarding the, 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 the hand dryer. Every time I move by a hand dryer, as recently as this weekend, I just chuckle and I think of Elaine. I, I chuckle myself and think, oh my we're ready God, to get hand dryers. So Elaine was really, really wanting hand dryers. <laughs> She was really wanting them, and other members too. And we moved forward, and we were, we were literally like a week away. We were going we to order. I'm not sure if we already did order. She came in with this all this new research on how awful they are. Yeah, so they that spread like, germs and we're like, well, wait a minute, back up. You started the train. What happened here? Yeah, so every like time. as they were being installed, like Daryl we was get like ready to do it. And, uh, I said, I'm sorry. I got yeah, new information. But we, it's true. Yeah. So everything's ready to go. We're Bamboo going to paper towels. That's my next move. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we do have that. the recycle bins now in the bathroom for the paper towels. Oh, okay. So. All right. Call them bamboo. At Just my burn house. them. Me too. Yeah. Our stone <laughs> bamboo. Yeah. So okay. right. ready Sorry, to go. Our swipe cards. Well, we should be getting our swipe cards next week, and then the next phase. Um, we have. We don't have a date yet, but the next phase will be to have the locks replaced, and so we'll be able to start fresh with the swipe cards, knowing who has them, knowing who's in the building. Um, so we're very excited about that. Long the people putting in have been very professional. They've been in and out of classrooms, um, but very, you know, is it okay to come in? It's been a great transition. That's it. <coughs> people with those thousands of keys out there from generations yeah. are going to be so pumped that they can't get into the gym. The legacy keys. I think I still have Sometimes one to, I come to in frontier, actually. <laughs> Sunday, I'm like, hi, hi, who are you? <laughs> I'm such a such, who are you? I'm like, I'm the principal. How'd, how'd you get in? Oh, I have a key from years ago. <laughs> you found one at the dump. I found one at the dump. You did? That's crazy. That's crazy. Take it or leave it. Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Labeled school key. It's a CGS, do not copy, do not duplicate. <laughs> <laughs> do not well, they didn't. The they dump. just left it behind. Yeah. It comes with gym time on Sunday afternoon. Sunday on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we can scary. laugh. We, we can laugh because we're close to it changing. <laughs> yeah. So that's that update. You're gonna have to turn that in. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. I found it. Nice. All righty. Uh, are you preparing any other big projects? 
ahead. So okay. we have we will be bringing a list for to for the next meeting. Okay. The one that we had talked about was um, you know the carpet replacement and things right. like that. We have to get that ready for the town warrant. Okay. So that'll be our next step. Good. Okay. Um, the carpet replaced and uh, great. All right. Uh, no votes required on that. So. Um, Collaborative report, do you want? Or so, yeah, this is put off from the December meeting, so we're, right. we're a little not overdue yet. But basically, the collaborative, um, which we are a member of, which we talked about a few moments ago, is looking to take on um, Gateway Regional and Worthington want to join. Oh. Interesting couple going in. That is. Um, since there used to be one. Um, I, Gateway was a part of it, I think, years ago, and they I left that they one were. point. And when then, I was so in order to get... Um, brought back in, you have to we have to be voted then in, and then um, as they're also changing as part of their, I guess what do they call it, their charter or their um, agreement is that the commissioner can send a liaison to the board. I think it's a, a, a state law regarding funding connected to that, and then that they're also going to charge more, uh, 25 25 percent more to non-members for using services. So oh. We're members, so that doesn't affect us, but they're trying to make sure that every school joins and because it allows them to get more money right. and so on and so forth. So anyways, so the major part is the voting in the new dis the new districts and the new schools okay. into the system. So can I have a motion to allow the new dis schools into the collect CES? Um, make a motion to uh, allow the town, uh, the school districts of Gateway and Worthington. Mm, uh, I think you better just, just approve to amend the, the collaborative <coughs> agreement amend. because you're going to do all all three of those little things. Oh, right. Oh, okay. So approve to amend. I'll make a motion to huh? approve to amend the changes to the collaborative. Is it the your charter? No. The What's that? The, the collaborative agreement. 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 Okay. Collaborative. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. It wasn't a difficult one. No. Nope. You didn't miss anything there. It was that simple. Yeah. <laughs> uh, proposed FY21 budget. All right. So you already have a copy. I got a copy. You have a copy. So there's three documents here that there's a copy for each of you. Check. Take one. Oh, take one. Just take one of either. You're like, I don't want this. <laughs> 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 Give me one back. Yeah. Three different documents there. All right, so everybody's anxious, I know, to see the numbers and dive into this because yes. this is the first peek that you're getting. Um, but if I can just explain quickly. Ashley, what can I have the first one back? Oh, pass them all. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I didn't follow directions very well at all. Okay. So what you have is a narrative summary of the budget highlighting the significant changes. This page that looks like an Excel spreadsheet. This is line by line here, and this compares the actuals that we've that we're putting in, the draft that we're putting in, compared to the budget from last year. So these two things look a little bit different and say different things, but ultimately they all feed into this larger document, which gives you line by line, as well as a comparison from the prior three years and actuals. So I'm gonna go over the narrative piece with you, and then um, Kristen can speak primarily to any of the additions or increases um, better than I can. So interrupt at any time if you have questions, stop me if I'm talking too fast. I know it's the first that you're digesting. Um, so the most important piece is up there in line one, uh, what this draft, our initial uh, percentage increase comes to right now is 3.89% or $75,979. Uh, we recognize that we need to bring this down, uh, but wanted to come to you with what the needs and wants were of the school. So just a little bit of background on how the budget was built. Uh, we looked at the prior three years and made adjustments to some expenditures uh, where needed, whether that was increase or decreasing a line based on the prior three years actuals. And then we have input from the principal and the department heads on needs and um, wants, sort of wish list kind of things that have been potentially been put off in prior <coughs> years. 
Um, so we have included funds for salary and wage increases for IAs based on their contract. Um, teachers uh, with a potential settlement of negotiations and then non-union personnel as well, which includes principal, central office staff, custodian, uh, other folks in those positions that are not in a union contract. Uh, and as in prior years, there will be other funds that are used to help offset the school's budget, such as general funds, I mean re revolving funds or grants. Um, but until we narrow down this general fund number to what we're actually gonna present to the town, um, we're not really gonna talk a lot about those numbers tonight as we continue to iron things out. They will be presented in the next meeting. Uh, so I'm going to go through the items listed here. Uh, these items were either added to the budget or there was an increase based on needs or wants of the department head or the principal. So the first line is that um, I understand that there were some printing and copying issues here at the school. Has We've had some old equipment. Um, and Kristen had worked with Scott to put together a new lease with the copier company. So that is an addition of $4,000 to the budget. Um, you'll be starting that lease hopefully July 1st, right? Um, with some new equipment that will better serve the administrative staff, support staff, and then the teaching staff. Teacher mentor stipends, uh, we added 2,500. This is a new line here because these stipends have previously been paid from grant funds and we're looking to move them onto the general fund. There's no guarantee with grants and it's something that is needed from year to year. It's really an annual expenditure that should be absorbed by the general fund. Uh, curriculum development stipends, Conway Grammar School did not have a line item for this. Uh, so between Kristen and Kim, there was some discussion around that. So there have been funds added there, $1,500. Uh, there was a request for an increase in the general classroom supplies. I will let Kristen speak to that at the end if you guys have questions. Um, that was a $2,000 increase to this line. Uh, we talked about the security system that's going in for the doors, the new FOB system. Even though it's brand new, there could potentially be something that comes up. We want to make sure that we have the funds available for that. So we added $1,000 to cover any unexpected expenses that come, could come up to maintain that system. And that'll be something that's an annual recurring. We want to just have that safety net in there. Custodial, uh, we increased the custodial line by $3,600 to allow for additional summer custodial support based on needs of the building. Uh, and then building general repairs and then the building testing inspection line. Um, I mentioned in my general financial report that we've had some conversations about building things. It's nothing major, it's minor line items that seem to be underfunded. Uh, so we're trying to bring those back up based on actuals. I can't speak to why they were decreased in fiscal year 20, uh, but they are lower this year and we're seeing that we need to find money from other places for these two line items. So we're bringing those back up. General repairs is increased by 7,000 and then that testing line, which is for um, smoke alarm, fire extinguishers, all of that annual stuff for safety in the building. Um, we're increasing that line by $2,000 based on actuals from the prior three years. The teacher salaries uh, with the potential contract settlement that we have built into the budget, we're looking at approximately a $35,000 increase. That also includes step changes and column changes, which I believe there is, um, I don't think there's any column changes here next year. Um, so it's just step changes for this school. We also lost in fiscal year 20, $10,000 in Title I funding. So we don't anticipate we'll get that back. So we had to absorb that back into the local budget as well. And then uh, non-union personnel, again, central office staff, principal, secretary, mm -hmm. custodians, uh, we're anticipating a wage increase of just under $5,000 for those staff. Uh, there is the request to add one new position to the FY21 budget, and I will let Kristen speak to that at the end. That is a for a new full-time special education teacher. The approximate salary could be $55,000. That's what we have placed hold held in here. And then uh, there are some reductions in the budget at this school, surprisingly, um, that I thought were worth noting here. There's always some minor fluctuation, but these were more significant that I did want to point out. 
Uh, so IA wages, we're gonna move uh, position onto this bed revolving budget. That budget is healthy year to year with existing revenue and existing staff, and it also has some surplus from prior year savings, which we don't wanna deplete. We wanna have some cushion in case something comes up and someone has a need that is unexpected. Uh, but that revolving fund can definitely support the wages for another IA staff member. So we've moved that over onto special education revolving. Um, textbooks by recommendation of Kristen, uh, we're reducing by $1,000. Health <coughs> services, uh, this is really a change that took place this year. Uh, with Meg Birch's position being split out part by the grant, she's only half time here at Conway, and the new nurse that we have, it just happened to reduce the wages because they're not on the same step on the salary scale. So that's a savings for you moving forward. Um, employee separation costs, we have no retirement payouts for next year, so that line was brought down. And then uh, there was a line item for uh, insurance for active employees. I understand that that was an insurance adjustment that had to be paid out for um, FY20 only, so we can pull that off of the budget as well. And then I gave you there on the bottom what the percentage increases are. It's also on the last page of the larger full budget for you, but just gives you a snapshot of what 1%, 2%, 3%, and 4% increases would look like. I know that was a lot, and it was really fast, and this is your first time hearing it, so I'm happy to take questions or have Kristen speak mm -hmm. to any of the additions. Does that security company offer any kind of maintenance plan? Or? I don't think so, because we've just had the hardware and the FOB I mean, system set I up. Imagine I'm there's, sure there's, I'm sure there's, there's warranties on their things, but we're just talking about the overall putting money aside in case we have a problem with hardware, you know, yeah. door alignments. Conway's doors are in better shape than the other ones, so this is actually less than we put in the other schools, but um, this might be something that will disappear in future year. It might be something we have to, you know, continually uh, create a line item for security. You know, so if we're not going to use it for repairing the doors, then maybe we can add on whatever we're adding on for security and those kind of things. So just line out in there. It seems like the... Uh a big contribution to this percentage increase is that new sped teacher. Yeah, so um, we we don't have enough man hours to cover all of the IEP hours currently. Um, Carol and Paula are playing sort of double duty all over the place. Um, our number of I, our amount of IEP hours have increased. Um, with new students and um, we just don't have enough hours. Waitley, which, uh, who's you know slightly smaller than us, just very slightly and it can change any day, they have two full-time special ed teachers. Um, so we, the bottom line is we just don't have enough, they don't have enough hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, no, you know, <laughs> barely any props, barely any lunch and they, they're doing a great job but you know, we just don't have enough hours. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, you've hardly ever asked for something like yeah. that, so I'm yeah. sure you need it or yeah. needed it years ago. Yeah, we, we did, <laughs> so. and we've tried really hard, but yeah. we've come to the point where um, we just need to meet those IEP hours. So Is there room to fit in a, another yeah. sports teacher? Yeah, okay. so Carol and Paulette have a really great setup in their room, and um, there's it's pretty much in four sections, really. So um, they train, they do a lot of training by A's and work in... Um, there, but yes, okay. You're right. yeah. They would just become a part of that class. Yeah. Makes sense. So aside from that one line item, we're really at like a one percent increase, roughly. Like around. It'd probably be about one and a half. Yeah. yeah. And that's in part because we've had those reductions, you know, moving that mm -hmm. IA, that's almost a $20,000 savings for your budget. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then the other things in there, 13000 for employee separation costs, not having someone retire. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's something that we've had discussions of repeatedly, um, whether or not you carry some of that money year to year, because if we take it out and then next year we try to add it back in, that's, you know, three quarters of a percent so right. um, you know is that something we really want to drop is a question that we should answer right. 
and otherwise it's it's primarily wages beyond that because we've made reductions in those other lines even the minor increases you know the adding a thousand adding 2500 for those mentor stipends you know those aren't adding up to a whole lot it's primarily salaries and the new teacher is there any way to fund the sped new sped teacher through anything going on with wings or any of the money they have coming in there or that's where we move the uh, that's where we move position the to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we can certainly continue to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, the school choice numbers also look healthy for Conway for next year based on what the um, budget, the cherry sheets that were put out earlier this week. So, yeah. you know, we'll have to analyze everything a little bit further and see yeah. if there's any way to move things around. Um, we don't want to be in a habit of putting something that's an annual recurring expense right. on those revolving funds because they can fluctuate year right. to year. So, um, or suddenly you know, maybe we do district placement exactly. That you, you know, exactly. $100,000. You know, but it might be something that we could do part of the salary from somewhere else yeah. for next year and slowly get it onto the local budget versus a full Right, $55,000. Yep. So there were some line items, Kristen, that you were going to talk about? Or no, I think uh, Shelly just asked is, if you had any questions. So my the increase that I, classroom supplies by 2000s. When we come to the year, end of the year, we're very careful about how we spend our budget. We look, you know, look at it all the time. And I'm very encouraged to see that that's in there because I think you don't ask for I, enough in and terms we're always, of classroom this, supplies. Last year we had a and teachers paper. supply too much on their own. So. Yeah, last year we had a borrow paper <laughs> tier until they got more <laughs> after July one. Right. Right. So it's, it's just that a little it's bit it's that it's uh, yeah. So thank you. And yeah, teachers do spend a lot of money on so. classrooms. And um, uh, I think everything else is self-explanatory. Oh, maybe with the new system. You know. No, it should open. It should. That should. Yeah. Well, I don't know who that guy is anyway. Is it? Was it singer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I watch a lot of crime shows. I don't think I'm like, I don't know who it is. I thought it was Phil, but it's not Phil. I'll just go down. Well, it should be Stranger Danger. I don't know. I don't know who it is. I'll go with her. Okay, good idea. I'll stay here. We're safe. That's what I'm going to do. It's just like a $2,000 right there. Oh, God. It's the most exciting school committee meeting. Do you want me to try again? Yeah. Just make sure <laughs> the door should open. It does. <laughs> 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 you just didn't want to knock that person over with uh... I don't. <laughs> Truthfully, they probably don't use that in the winter at all, so yeah. it's probably like yeah. a line of ice in the bottom of the yeah. <laughs> You okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think school committee oh, members are covered on all that door shut, right? Do you want to speak to that? Because that wasn't in here previously. Curriculum for 1500 I don't know Kim was paying for that before. See, they didn't know who it was either. They wanted the buddy system, just in case. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we just had a request for him to send earlier today for the final Yeah, yeah, so. so can't give them to him before I give them to him. Curriculum development stipend is. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Sometimes teachers ask to. Maggie, do you mind speaking to what you did over the. <laughs> sorry, over the summer. Um, sometimes teachers ask to take a, a deep curriculum review. You and Matt, you and. You, you and Jill looked at the math. Oh. Do you, just for an example, do you mind speaking to Yeah, that? so Jill, the fourth grade teacher, and I spent a few days over the summer just looking at the fourth grade curriculum, the fifth grade cu curriculum, um, trying to figure out how they align, and then also like how how our math block works and how they're similar and things. So that's what that means. Yeah. Thank you. Great. I imagine he asked for it earlier today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. No, we're good. Uh, well, it looks like a good starting point from my perspective on the budget. <coughs> I'm glad you're finally listening to us, Kristen, and yes. putting a pen that you need. I did find some favorite pens. I'm obsessed with Elaine and it, it, like the the bold pens that just glide along. I've had many of you try them, haven't I? Excellent. And I was like, Elaine would be very proud of me that like I'm ordering these yeah. pens. Exactly. <laughs> I am very. Proud they're big. Put a quick stop they're big. No, they're they're big. Oh, they're, they're big. Right, but they're right, bold. Right. They're 
Eddie's bowl. Bowl. Like, our, like our, my principal, like bowl. No, you have to try one later. You have to step by my office. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any further questions on the budget? Um, just that, you know, we no. mentioned it was about a approximately a 3.89% increase. And that still might go up or down? Or that's kind Definitely of... Definitely not up. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're not so looking to go up. But yes, the idea was to, to present yeah. what the needs and the wants were, because this definitely yeah. does include some wants. Yeah. Um, and then to go back to the drawing board, you know, Kristen and Darius and I kind of talk about where we could um, move some things around and what could get slimmed down, you know. If we can't do 2,000 in general supplies, mm -hmm. which I know you want to do, but you know, does it become 1,500? Well, they you know, run that out kind of paper, of like, to, you know, that's a little um, much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but just as an example, you know, yeah. how can we right. sort of shave things back a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Right. So with needing to add the new position, looking where there's some exactly. cost savings in other spots. Exactly. Okay. Well, or fund it differently. Right. We could. To, we could do we a partial and do it over two years. Take it all so. on. Because right. wings usually has money coming in. Right. Well, thank from, you for your tuition, work so. on this and uh, yeah. your continued review of it. So thank you. Great. You're welcome. Okay. Um, memorandum of agreement? Yes. So This is the two of the last on the list. So basically, as you know, we, we have um, settled a contract with the IAs, but we had a, um, I met with the union leadership of the IAs um, regarding just an issue that hasn't really, I'm not sure if it has been so much here as it's been in the other schools, but we agreed to pay the IAs um, for sub coverage after an hour of subbing, they get a $5 stipend for covering the class. Um, in some buildings, there's been times where IAs will cover for 45 minutes at the beginning of the day, then 45 minutes later in the day, and now they've done an hour and a half of coverage, yet they're not receiving a stipend. And so there's inconsistency. Some principals were recognizing it, said, oh yeah, put the two together, but it wasn't really kind of written down. But in our conversation, we also talked about if they cover a special that's not an hour in length, but are they acting as a sub, as the teacher, let's say we use phys ed very, as an easy one, if they're taking over phys ed for the entire class and running the class like the teacher, but the phys ed class is only 45 minutes, they've really gone on above and beyond the, where they should be giving a statement of $5, $35 for the full day of, of subbing. Um, but the idea was that all the specials are under an hour and we're really kind of, I thought it was in the best, it was, you know, it was in the, within the meaning of what we were trying to do there, that if they were going to use them in that capacity and not hire a sub for the day on the out and, and that kind of thing, that they should be recognized for that. And so that's what this, there's a lot of writing here for those two basic spots, but mm -hmm. basically the, all the writing in between it is basically to say that this is sunset, meaning they're going to have to negotiate it in the next contract. It's basically say it's a trial during this contract period and that either side can stop the, at any time if they feel it's not, it's not, um, what the other side wants. So okay. it's a really straightforward concept, but I'm going to need um, a vote to approve it because it's a change in the contract, and then I need you to have to sign that okay. right up here um, if you agree. So can I have a motion to approve the memorandum of <coughs> agreement with the Union 38 School Districts and the Union 38 Instructional Assistance Association? I will make a motion. I'm going to try this again. <laughs> I'll make a motion to accept the memorandum of agreement between the Union 38 School Districts and the Union 38 uh, Instructional Assistance Association. Great. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous? Thank you. Okay. So we're on to reports. Who wants to go first? My report. Um, so I gave you the link to our newsletter. Um, I don't know if anyone has had a chance to look at it, but so we're doing these four <coughs> grand newsletters a year, and we're getting 
um, feedback from the teachers. I, I love our new newsletter, so if you haven't had a chance, so I'll take a peek. Our school improvement plan, I provided people with an update. Um, I won't go through the whole thing if anyone has any questions, but we are moving along. I really, I really love the school improvement plan because we're um, tied to the goals of the district, tied to the teacher goals, tied to IA goals, tied to school goals, and it gives us a direction. It gives us a roadmap. So we just did a huge update in January, so um, and we're in really good shape with that. Um, just want to talk about all school meetings um, based on based on the um, survey that we did two years ago, a parent survey about um, communication and you know ways to improve. Um, you you know we certainly thought we were doing a good job, but there's always ways to improve. And so one thing that we added is what's called all school meetings. And every month we have an all school meeting on uh, Tuesday, and it's hosted by um, two different classes. In one case, three. So and it's split like fifth and first and fourth and um, the, it's just split the classes and it's run like a responsive classroom meeting which many of our teachers do in the classrooms it's child the children run it um, we invite families in at 8 30 for coffee and pastry then we have our meeting at 8 45 it's about 20 minutes and then families are invited to go back to the classrooms to see what's going on we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from That's our awesome. families about that especially right in the middle of the day and say mm -hmm. to your boss, I'm going to be 15 minutes late and still right. get to work on time. Mm -hmm. um, students in grade 3 to 6 um, are have just completed the NEWA test, so I'll be updating you um, at the next meeting. Although our IET, IRT, I, ILT instructional leadership team um, will be looking at those scores as well in areas that we need to work on. Although, we, again, we're heading in the right direction. And K-2 to two go through a series of assessments as well. Paulette does a lot of assessments. It tells us where kids are right here in January. I can probably tell you right now, if you ask me where a child is, I could probably tell you right now where they are because we spend so much time looking at the data <coughs> and figuring out plans for kids. Oh, this he's a little below a math. What are we going to give them? Um, so that it's a good dipstick for us. Our instructional leadership team, again, this year, uh, very powerful. So, you know, I put out a request, who wants to be on it? And every classroom teacher, reading special and special ed teacher, we're all on the ILT, which is, again, a principal's dream, I'm telling you. I don't want to tell you too much about this job because it's really amazing. Um, and we're working, uh, our big work this year is in writing, after looking at MCAS. Um, we're working on uh, writing and studying about writing and looking at student writing. Right now we're working on writing non-negotiables for each grade level. So by the end of first grade, every student will be able to one, two, three, four, five. And we're going up the line working on those. Um, we're also doing some great, I mean, some of the best professional development is right in your building, right? So we're doing peer observations. These, these people are amazing. So we start with kindergarten and we did and we follow Mike Anderson model. Um, we do a pre-conference. All of us and the kindergarten teacher presents the lesson and what, what he wants us to look for. We go and do observation and then we do a post-conference. So we did K and 1 already. And then next week we do 2, 3, and 4. And then the following <coughs> week we do 5 and 6. So it's really nice to see. And we're focusing on writing. We're looking as we go along. We also did something where each teacher brought a um, writing sample of a student who's struggling, a student who's on grade level, and a student who, who's above, so we could really pinpoint areas that we're doing well in and areas that we want to work on, and boy, they got right to work. So very powerful team, great team. Kim McCarthy has joins us for our ILTs, which is really nice, and she was here for Peer Observation Day. I mean, there's no better professional development than teachers going into other teachers' classrooms and looking and seeing, okay, um, and giving suggestions and teachers t taking that feedback and trusting and being able to take that feedback. So I am so proud of the place that we're in and that we're able to do that. Mo a lot of teachers are like, no, 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 you're not coming into my classroom. Or it's sort of like, come on in, you know, and it's, it's great. So um, our faculty PD, we just, January, February, we've had, had a half a day technology PD. Uh, Kim McCarthy has brought the sheltered English immersion course to the district, which is huge. For recertification, many teachers have to take this course, and sometimes they have to travel to Williamstown or, you know, Orange or wherever, and she, she worked with the collaborative, and it's coming here, um, which is amazing. 
and it's a it's a rigorous course it's 12 weeks it's once a week for four hours and we have a nice cohort at Conway that are going to go through it together um, which is great because when they hit recertify it could come up that did you take the course um, so we can check that off the list and um, just real quickly um, we've had phenomenal instructional assistant professional development this year so not only do we have the early release days half our IAs are with kids half the IAs are doing professional development we continued in January and February so every Friday even though it's a full day half of our IAs have professional development from 1 30 to 2 15 and the other half from 2 15 to 3 every Friday January and February what's the best professional development it's what we're doing in the school so the first professional development for the IAs in January was Paulette. And Paulette, do you want to quickly talk about what your focus oh, was? Well, we looked at reading errors and how you handle when a child struggles or they make an error when they're reading. What kind of prompts, what might you say to a student at the various grade levels? Consistency in the school. Maggie um, was up next, and she did a um, workshop, two phenomenal, I mean, great reviews on teacher Lang, do you want to talk a little bit about that? On teacher language and being <laughs> consistent across the school and being positive and assuming best intentions and what to yeah. say. And yeah, what to say and instead of this, try this. So. This week, Kate Arsenal is going to do something on um, keyboarding because we're, we're doing a lot with keyboarding with the kids. And I think every teacher in the building is doing something. So that's been, that's been just great. And, the teachers have been great about freeing up the IAs during that time. And the, the last thing is Global Play Days, February 5th. We're going to be participating in it. It's um, unstructured play. You're supposed to just put it out and let the kids play. And um, and my last quote was my little kindergartner, our little kindergartner walking down the hall. Mrs. Gordon, I have great news. You do? What is that? My dad said I get to stay here till the end of sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Best quote. <laughs> so as I told you, they just keep getting better and better and better, the staff. That's awesome. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, any other reports? I heard you say none for you. Okay. Keeping you busy. Michael, you have a collaborative update at all? Yeah, I'll just, uh, there was two meetings that I attended since, uh, like over the course of the fall, and uh, the first one was focused on social justice and equity in, inside of their um, their organization and also out, outreach to all the 40 plus districts that they work with. And um, I was just extremely impressed with how they, the mechanisms and systems they have in place inside of their organization to foster equity and then um, some of the programming that they're going out to schools and providing about what equity means for a district and for the students and families that are part of that community so I just was really impressed with the work that they're doing uh, and then the, uh, the most recent meeting I think was about some of the uh, organizational changes that were happening and stuff like that. So. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for going. Uh, if there's nothing else, to, are we going to do executive session? It's up to you. Can you an update on uh, oh. license negotiation? You know it, but it's up to your Do you guys want an update on negotiations or? Yes. Okay. So we're going to go into executive session. Thank you very much for coming.